Let me show you a couple things before we go. Ali has been working on a really cool system. Um, it started as our door system, but now it's been generalized to a pretty crazy degree um, to allow us to do a number of things. Um, yeah, uh, the the thing that he was already working on it, but it was funny. We were uh, play testing over the weekend, uh, you know, a handful of us, and we were in the dungeon. And we we're in these rooms that didn't have any lighting. And so the the idea came to mind, like I woke up, had coffee, or while I was having coffee, I was like, I bet I could use our interactive, text-based interactive objects, our mud objects, to hack together um, like a prototype, very hacky prototype of spawning a light in a room, like basically using a torch to illuminate a room. So I get in there, I'm all excited. I'm like, oh, this is going to be genius. And I'm using like an invisible man that's actually a light source. And it summons when you um, interact with uh, the, the text-based object. So basically, I look, I see that there's an empty torch holder on the wall. And then I use torch. And because I have a torch, it spawns the invisible man that's got a light source. And boom, illumination, right? So I'm like, man, I'm a genius. And then Ali, Ali comes in here. And it's just like, oh, I can actually use our, I can turn our doors into an extremely impressive, fully functional sort of data scriptable in the database system that will do that same thing only better, right? So here we have evidence of that right here. You've got an empty torch holder on a wall. What does it do? Well, because it used to be a door, it tells me it's locked and I'm not holding the key. We'll, we'll have to, that'll be a thing. That's the polish thing. That's a polish thing. We'll figure out how to actually message that. That'll be an interesting one. But I'm going to cheat just once on this character. I'm going to summon a torch. Or maybe I should just come back. No, I'm going to summon a torch. Nope, oh, it doesn't. I'm not a GM yet. GM on. I'm going to summon a torch. Okay, now I have a torch, right? Which is awesome because there's a torch holder and let's just pretend it's dark. Actually, let's just make it dark for effect. How about that? Okay, it's dark. So I've got a torch in my hand. I click on this thing and it's like, you're not holding the thing that I want. And I'm like, or what if I, what if I hold a torch? And then I click you. What? And now I don't have a torch anymore because it's up there. And the way that this is designed, it could do any number of things based off the fact. So it could be that most times you just put a torch up there, but sometimes when you put a torch up there, we trigger a, you hear a click. What was that click? What is that? I heard a click. I'm in a dungeon. Put a torch on the wall. I heard a click. And then you look and you uh, reveal secret door. Because I said the reveal in an accent. I don't know that that was a French accent though. You've unlocked the cat room. It could teleport you to the cat room. It can do a lot of stuff. So this is a very cool, very powerful system. One of the things that we want to do with torches anyways, I need to have Ollie show me how to do it. Or Nick. Um, I'm not sure. Somebody. Our torches will burn out over time anyway. Just like the lantern will use fuel. Um, so if you keep an eye on this torch, we'll come back in a little bit. It'll probably be gone because it'll have burned out. Now to the next thing. Speaking of French doors, if I click on one of these two doors, they open and close. Right now they're spamming the entire zone with this emote. Or is it just the radius? Is it the radius, Ali? We lowered the radius so, uh, of messages so that it's not quite as spammy when we're playtesting and stuff. Boom. Now look at it. I did not touch it that time. What happened was, what happened was the sun is coming up. So it's daytime. So the doors know that it's daytime and they've opened because it's a bit safer out. And now I can't interact with them either. Pretty fancy. I don't know guys. I thought it was pretty impressive. We've got a big lever here. The lever of dampness has been pulled. It begins to rain. The details make all the difference. Very cool. So pretty... Pretty cool. Um, all of this is using the exact, it's the same two tables in the database. And now for number four, I can click this. And we're good. Keith, I did not notice that. Okay, you disabled the clicky part. Oh, do you... Oh, okay, the click on the left, cool. Yeah, I was, I was curious about that. I like the levers. So, you wanna see something real cool? Let's see if Ollie fixed it. First of all, what's real cool is underneath this, underneath this platform, I'm not getting rained on. So that's uh. 
Ali, is the easing off towards the end, is that intentional? Or is that just a happy accident? It took you an hour to get the easing working? Damn, that's dedication to polish. I love, I love Robert's music in the background. Those of you that haven't been here for a while, Robert's got a nice, like, 30 minute, just kind of ambient, chill loop that kicks in after the zone music is done. Oof. Ali said, everything I do is for satisfaction. He did it for himself. We just happen to be the beneficiaries. Golden Gloves asked, how do you approach making sure players don't get squished by elevators? And Ali responded and he mentioned this. Oh, that is nice at the end. Um, mentioned basically uh, have it be a plane instead of a cube, right? Right now there's a, there's a collision plane on both sides. Um, so it's pushing me down from above. If we just have the collision um, plane on the top, then I'll pop through and land on the, the elevator. Um, or what would be really maybe um, cool would just be to have it crush you and kill you and then smush you, your corpse into the dirt for being a dummy. Yep, that's the kind of game we're making. Sorry, guys, if you didn't know that. All right, so let me actually start killing some stuff. We are 46 minutes in, um, and I've yet to rightfully earn any experience, so let's get on it. Come here, skeleton. I need your bones. I need your bones. I want your bones. Hey. I am a necromancer, Alias. Uh, we, uh, those of you that haven't been around in a while and have not, um, been checking out the VODs, we've started playing with new particles, um, so check out Zukin's VODs for that on YouTube here, or when he's streaming live, even better. Um, I got this guy, I'm not even sweating it. So let me get up all my commands. Those of you that are new here. You can find our VODs here. And... What? I got a bracer straight out of the gate. I'm rolling fast. I'm pretty blind. So, I'm gonna go sit. Um... This is a harvest node, right? Ollie and or Nick. I have not tried using a harvest node um, because I don't have, I didn't have a tool. It's a copper vein. Cool. <laughs> As a necromancer, all living things are harvest nodes, Nicodemus said. It's true. Especially if you're a deep gnome necromancer. If you're ever in a group with a deep gnome necromancer and they're like, Hey, hold still. I want to see what makes you tick. Um, do not turn your back on them. Do necromancers pay for services in game with crypto. Oh my gosh. Golden gloves. That warrior keeps, you know what? I think, uh, oh no, I'm not, uh, my plan is foiled. Holy shit. That happened fast. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I'm just going to aggro him and run him to the guard so I can stop worrying about him. Or I'm just going to get sp flattened and that'll be that oh the oh i see what you're saying the old D, D style you feel a breeze because there is a secret door yeah we, um ollie just added the ability for us to do that uh so you you see i've got a look button over here and that's just kind of a generic i look and then it'll tap into whatever the space is kind of defined as um right now it just says you're a night harbor but it could say you know, some description of the uh, area that you're in, if it's a more interesting area. Um, but then as you get different abilities, you can um, attack. Um, you get different abilities, or sorry, skills. Um, then it's, you, depending on what the skill is, um, you may notice something that people without that skill don't notice. Essentially, it's different types of perception. 
Um, and so we've got that already. But now we've got, um, Ollie just made it so that we can, we can make it so that when you enter a volume, it'll do exactly what you were thinking. So you walk into, uh, you walk into a volume, it'll, it'll fire off using our, uh, mud objects. Um, it'll fire off the, you feel a breeze, uh, coming from the wall. Um, and it may even just tell you the direction or something like, um, and then, then you can use your special skills. So, uh, you can look and inspect and all sorts of stuff, uh, with, you know, whatever skill happens to be applicable to it. And so, um, and then maybe you, you'll see something like, uh, you see a loose brick. And then you can, we currently have the ability for you to hit like slash pry and it'll ask you what you want to pry with. And then you'll hold like a, any sort of pointy, uh, any pointy weapon. Like my dagger is flagged as having pry as a tag. Um, and then it will pry the brick and open, reveal the secret door. So you can see over there, my torch burned out. The doors are open now. <laughs> torch opens door group goes in and then I remove torch offer to replace it for 50% of all loot heading towards the dungeon Nilni asks sorry if it's been brought up before never never apologize for a question it's that's what we're here for <clears throat> but any thoughts on level difference while grouping experience gain uh, we're trying to find a way, and if I misspeak, someone can correct me, but we're trying to find a way to make that as, um, as tolerant as possible. We want people to be able to, want people to be able to play together. Um, there, there are a lot of ideas on sort of the extreme version of that, um, that I don't think I'm really ready to speak to, but dude, look at me, Nick, Nick, look at me. Hell yeah, Freddie Mercury. I know how to design a tunic. <laughs> 